Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, now answering question number 11 from the October 2022 International A Level LXL Pure Mathematics P4 exam. This question here is first about differentiation, and they've given us a diagram where you've got x and y axes. x axis is defined as east, um, the positive x axis, positive y axis is defined as north. Um, it says figure 4 shows a sketch of the closed curve with equation x plus y cubed plus 10y squared equals 108x. Show that dy dx equals, and they've given you an expression for you to show that the that's the expression for dy dx. So we have to differentiate this expression and write our answer as dy dx. Okay, now, for us to do this question, we have to use what's called implicit differentiation right because you have uh, you don't have y in terms of x you have you don't have like an equation where you've got it expressed in terms of what as y as a subject it's not y equals some function of x and you can just find dy dx easily here the y is very difficult to make it the subject of the expression so the equation so we have to use another method of differentiate differentiation called implicit differentiation so with implicit differentiation, what you do is you, multi you differentiate each term, like you differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x. Okay, you want to find dy dx, you differentiate the whole of this side with respect to x and the whole of that side with respect to x. So it's just like when we do anything to an equation, you do something to one side, you do exactly the same to the other side. So we're differentiating the whole of this side with respect to x. So d, uh, d um, x plus y cubed with respect to x and 10y squared with respect to x and the other side um, you have to differentiate 108x with respect to x okay now we know with differentiation you can differentiate terms separately from each other okay so you have like a whole set of terms you can differentiate one each term separately so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to differentiate each of these terms separately so when you differentiate x plus y cubed with respect to x here we're going to use the chain rule Right? So when you have something um, to the power of something, to differentiate that, you multiply the by the power and take one from the power. It's a polynomial type of differentiation. So this is going to be 3 times x plus y to the power of 2. Then you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Now, inside the function is x plus y. Now, if you differentiate x with respect to x, you get 1. But then you have to differentiate y with respect to x as well. So differential of y with respect to x is, by definition, dy dx. So you have to put dy dx there. Okay, so this is something important. A lot of students miss this out. Okay, if you read the examiner's report, they mixed, mixed, mixed out this, they missed out this dy dx over here. Right? So you multiply by the power, you take one from the power, and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 1 plus, one plus dy dx. Then you do the same for the next term. You differentiate this term with respect to x. So 10y squared with respect to x. So again, you multiply by the power. That gives you 20. y to the power of 1. And then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Now, inside the function here is a y. Okay? So again, you have to multiply by the differential of y with respect to x, which is, by definition, dy dx. All right? And the other side of the equation, 108x, differentiating that with respect to x just gives you 108 that's a, there's no y term involved there. That's just simply 108. So now we have an expression um, or an equation which involves dy dx, and we have to make dy dx a subject and show that this is what we get. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to like expand this bracket here to free this dy dx from inside the bracket so I can, it can be free to move around. So this will be 3 times x plus y squared times 1. That's 3 times x plus y squared. And then 3 times x, square, x plus y squared times dy dx. So that's going to be 3x plus y squared times dy dx. Then you're going to have plus 20y times dy dx equals 108. Okay, now I'm going to uh, keep the dy dx terms together on one side and all the non-dy dx terms I will... Um, you use the, the right side for those. So I'm going to subtract 3 times x plus y squared from both sides. So here I'm left with 
3 times x plus y squared dy dx, this is this term over here, plus 20 times y times dy dx equals 108 minus 3 times x plus y squared. Now, I'm showing every step very carefully and thoroughly because the question says show that and it's giving you the exact answer with all the constant values and everything. So when you have a question where it says show that, you have to show every step very, very clearly and, you know, you can't assume anything that, you know, you can't just, you know, write this down, for example, and then put the final answer down saying, well, it's going to give me the right answer anyway. No, you have to show every step clearly to show how you got to what they ask you to show. So you don't want to lose any marks there. It's worth five marks, this question. Right, so now what we're going to do, is I'm going to take out dy dx as a common factor of both of these two terms here, because I want to make this a subject in the end. So dy dx times, and then I'm going to have um, 3 times x plus y squared plus 20y equals 108 minus 3 times x plus y squared. And finally, I can divide both sides by this bracket, and I'll be left with dy dx as now the subject of this um, here. So I have 108 minus 3 times x plus y all squared over, and then I have 3 times x plus y squared plus 20 times y. Just make sure that's exactly what we had to show. 108 minus 3 times x plus y all squared. That's right. 3 and 20y plus 3 times x plus y all squared. So now, because they asked us to show this. I've written this in the, like the other way around. So I'm going to now write it. So it's, although it's the same thing, just because we had to show it in that way, I'm going to write it exactly how they ask us to write it as my final step. So I'll say over, and that's 20y plus 3 times x plus y, all squared. So there we have completed the question, shown every step very clearly all the way until the end. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. So the important point here is when you differentiate, especially this part here, you have to multiply by the power, take one from the power, then multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, and that is 1 plus dy dx. Okay, many students left out the dy dx in that section. So be very careful about that. Um, so there's the answer to part A of question number 11. And now we're going to move on to part B. It says the curve is used to model the shape of a cycle track with both x and y measured in kilometers. The points P and Q represents the points which are furthest north and furthest south of the origin, as shown in figure four. Using the result given in part A, which we've got written down over here, find how far the point Q is south of O. Give your answer to the nearest 100 meters. Okay, so we got to find basically the y coordinate of this point Q. We need to find the y coordinate of Q. That will be how far, how far south we are from the origin. Now Q and P are both, you can say, the turning points. They're both the places where the curve turns. Okay, so P and Q are both the turning points. So P and Q, okay, are stationary points. Stationary points where the gradient is equal to zero. Okay, so what we can say is that dy dx at the stationary point is equal to zero. So I can take our e expression for the gradient, and even if we got it wrong, we have it here. They told us what it is. So we can say 108 minus 3 times x plus y, all squared, over 20y plus 3 times x plus y, all squared, is equal to zero. And then I can multiply both sides by this denominator, which means it's going to become zero because you end up with, you have a zero on that side. So you have 108 minus 3 times x plus y all squared equals zero. Um, and then we can um, basically um, add this to both sides. So you have 3 times x plus y squared equals 108. We can divide both sides by 3. That gives us 36. That's 3 into 10 goes 3 minus 1. 36 equals x plus y squared. So we can say that x plus y is equal to plus or minus 6. So we have either x plus y equals 6 or x plus y equals negative 6. So there's two possible combinations here for x plus y. So if we take one of those, let's take x plus y equals 6. 
Okay, and we solve that simultaneously with the original equation. So we have the original equation. So we want to find the value, value of x and y, which satisfies this equation and also satisfies that equation. So we have x plus y cubed plus 10y squared equals 108x. Okay, so what we can do here, well, we know x plus y equals 6, so I can write this as 6 cubed. Um, as I want to find the y coordinate, I want things in terms of y. So what I will do is I'll replace this x in terms of y. I can see from here if x plus y equals 6, then x equals 6 minus y. So I have plus 10y squared. I want the y, so that's fine. Equals 108 times 6 minus y. All right. Now that should give us um, an equation where I can find two values of y. And one of them, obviously the negative one, is going to be what we need. Because we want to find how far south this point is from the origin. So we need to do the y coordinate of that. So let's now, it looks like we're going to get a quadratic equation here. So 6 cubed is what? 216, 216 plus 10y squared equals 106 times 8. Where's my calculator gone? So 106 times 8. Sorry, 108 times 6. Okay, that gives us 648. 648 minus 108y. So we have 10y squared plus 108y, and you have 216, 216 minus 648, 216 minus 648, that gives us minus 432, equals 0. So that's an equation which we can simplify, I think if we divide by 2, um, that will make it a bit easier, that gives you 5, y squared plus, uh, if you divide this by 2, you're going to get 54y minus 216 equals 0. Okay, so now to solve this, I think I will use the quadratic formula. So I can say y equals minus b, so it's minus 54, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 54 squared minus 4 times a, which is 5 times c, which is negative 216 all over 2 times a, which is 5. So that will give us our solutions. Okay, so we have negative 54. We'll start with plus the square root of 54 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 216 divided by. 10, 2 times 5, which is 10, and that will give us um, this answer, which is the positive one, okay, which is 3.1064, so y equals 3.1064, that's one answer, and then we have another one, 064, yeah, and the other one, the other answer is going to be when we change this for a minus, it gives you negative 13.906. So negative 13.906. Okay, so we want the negative one. We want the negative one, but we want the answer to the nearest meter, the nearest 100 meters. Okay, and this is in kilometers. So what might be sensible is to say that you got y equals negative, and if you multiply by a thousand, um, thirteen nine zero six. Let me just make sure. And that's now in meters. Okay, to the nearest hundred meters. Okay, that's going to be thirteen point nine zero six. Let's have a look. One second. So. That's 13,906 meters. So that's going to be minus 14,000 meters. So to the nearest 100 meters, actually it's 13.9. That's the nearest thousand, sorry. So it's 13.9. Okay, so it's going to be 
basically 13,900 meters. So we can say it's 13.9 kilometers or 13,900 meters. Either of those is fine. That's the nearest 100 meters. Okay, that's, the, that's 100 meters. The nearest 100 is going to be 13,900 13, meters. You can write that as 13.9 um, kilometers. It still means it's rounded to the nearest 100 meters. Okay, um, so there we have the answer to part B of this question. And that was the end of the question. That was the last part of the question. That's right. So um, that concludes this question and concludes this paper. As I said, it's quite a, a lot of questions for paper four. I was quite surprised to see it, but a few of the questions are pretty short. So I guess that's why they have an extra question here. I think it's still doable in the time. Um, yeah, so there we have it, the answer to this question. And this is a, a very typical of a um, question to deal, dealing with implicit differentiation and especially turning points, stuff where you end up with having to solve simultaneously between an expression you get from the gradient and the original equation to find the value of x or y for a particular point. So that's a very typical type of thing that you have to do. So we, we wanted to find the y coordinate of q, so we uh, expressed these two together as one equation in y only. So we could replace the x plus y part with 6, and we could replace the x part with 6 minus y. Okay, and then we could go ahead and have an equation just in y and get our answer, right? So another, another thing I think some people might have done is found the difference between p and q without reading this properly, right? It's not asking how far point q is south of p, but south of o. So some people might have taken our two answers that we got for this and subtracted them. Okay, but we're only interested in how far south we are from O. So we take the negative value of Y and that's how far south it is from O. Okay, so that concludes this question. Other questions from this paper, okay, can be found in the playlist, the link for which will be appearing in this region here. The link for other questions dealing with differentiation um, and implicit differentiation from P4 will be found in the link over here. Other questions um, um, from, um, well, you can subscribe to my channel from this link over here. And if you want to see a video which uh, explains how you can use my channel to find what you're looking for in a quick way and help you with revision, you can watch the video that will appear. The link will appear over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.